So Carrie, can you talk about what kind of contingency plans does the county have for coronavirus? Sure. So the contingency plans for coronavirus are very similar to our planning that we've done in the past for pandemic influenza. Because the virus spreads very similar, um, our plans are to work with our healthcare providers. We keep um, track of inventories, critical supplies, and we work with our partners to make sure they're able to meet the mission in our community to take care of patients. Is there anything different that the county is doing in terms of this virus as opposed to other public health emergencies we've had in the past? I think it, it most similarly mirrors the H1N1 plans. Um, although we've enhanced those, we, we certainly have more partners on board now, and we've also enhanced our communication structure from the H1N1 days to now, and we have healthcare alliances in place, which we didn't have back then, and that certainly helps with planning. So we've had, we're currently at zero cases mm -hmm. in Cochise County, um, but is there anything we can do to avoid getting a case? Is that even realistic? That's a good question. It's one I think that comes up a lot. And I, I think realistically, no, we're going to have cases of COVID. I don't think we can do anything to stop cases from coming, but the, the important thing is what to do when individuals are sick. Rather it's COVID or flu or, or some other respiratory illness. The really key thing here to, to protect our most vulnerable is for people to stay home when they're sick. So should they go to the doctor though? Should they go and get some kind of medical care? That's a good question as well. So for, especially for COVID, right? Or even for flu, let's talk about both for a minute. Um, we often get ill and we don't go to our healthcare provider. We don't get a serious illness. We just self-monitor at home and we decide based on what we're seeing if we can do that at home. So that's what we would encourage first. If individuals are in a vulnerable population, they have chronic diseases, they know they don't do well when they get the flu, for instance, they need to call their healthcare provider first. If it's an emergency, that's totally different, right? But if at all possible, they need to call first before they present to their healthcare provider so they can talk with them about their signs and symptoms and help them figure out what they can do. The other option could be if you have a um, health benefit plan that has telehealth, you could do um, a telehealth appointment with your provider if you're having mild symptoms. Okay, <clears throat> so there are people worried about if they have underlying health problems. Mm -hmm. What about those people? Underlying health problems are certainly one of the risk factors that we've seen happen in other parts of our country and in other parts of the globe. So I would tell them that they're gonna take the same precautions that they have during flu season in the past. Um, washing their hands frequently, we should all be doing that. Staying at home if they're ill, calling their providers if they do become ill because they know they have poor outcomes when they are um, fighting off seasonal influenza or whatever it may be. Also, um, these are the individuals that may want to avoid those large crowds and gatherings, right? And the other thing I would tell people, because we get this question a lot, they're thinking about traveling. Should I travel? I would tell them to go out to the CDC webpage and look at the most up-to-date travel information and inform their decision based on what they're seeing out there and the guidance from the Centers for De Disease Control and Prevention. So if I have a cough or I'm just feeling like I have a cold coming on, do I just stay home and ride it out for a couple of weeks? Um, I think that you need to stay home and see what happens, right? Some people can get a cough and they know it's allergies, but some people are getting a cough because they're becoming ill. So they need to stay home and see what happens. Um, ideally, this cough, this, this feeling should resolve itself in, in a few days, maybe a week. Um, if they're not getting better, or they're getting worse, then they need to call their providers. So how often is the county in contact with state and federal agencies? We're in contact on a daily basis with our state agencies and um, we get information from those state agencies uh, regarding federal direction. And what about testing? Um, is, are there enough tests? Are people being tests? tested, when should they be tested? Testing comes up all the time and I can understand and appreciate why people want to know that and it's it's certainly a point of frustration even for those of us who are healthcare providers. So we test, we do not test here at the public health department, we do not collect the tests. So these are tests uh, swaps that are out in the community. It's a regular viral test swap that goes into a viral transport media. 
there are enough test kits out there when we follow the CDC protocol for testing. And if you meet the criteria for testing, the provider will, you, whoever you're seeing, will work with County Health to get this test collected and then sent to the state lab for testing. And typically how long does it take for tests to results to come back? Once the state lab receives those tests, um, it's 24 to 48 hours. Okay. So are there any other words of advice or caution that you would give people during this time? I, I can understand that there's a ton of concern. Um, certainly we all share that. I think the big thing is staying at home when you're sick if you can manage yourself. Um, the other thing to remember is rather you test positive or negative for COVID, um, the treatment is still the same. There's no cure. And so it's supportive treatment, right? Things that we can do on our own at home. And that's, that can be the frustrating piece because people really want to know. And if we all inundate the healthcare system just to find out, um, our healthcare partners aren't going to be able to take care of those who are the sickest. And then we also risk exposing people who maybe have to be at the hospital for something unrelated. And now we've presented, we feel under the weather and we're contagious and we spread that to them even though we really didn't need to be there to get care ourselves. So I would say be mindful. Um, if you need care, then seek it. But if you don't, then take care of yourself, take care of your family, wash your hands and stay at home when you're sick. So where can people go to get official um, factual advice? So they can come to our county webpage. Um, we have links there to the Arizona Department of Health Services. We have links to the CDC. They can go to those sources directly as well. I really advocate that they use official sources because it's the most up-to-date, most current information that we have. And the information we share from the county is exactly what we're, we're getting from our state health officials as well as our federal. Okay. Thank you.